All right. Hello, everybody. This is Peter Semetti, publisher of Alterna Comics. We have a very special Alterna Comics Live tonight. We've got a very, very super rad guest on the show. Uh, some of you guys probably know this person. It is the one and the only MC Bat Commander, Lord of the Aquabats. <laughs> joining me tonight. Yeah. Hello, everybody. It's me, the Lord of the Dance. <laughs> <laughs> the dance. What's up, everybody? I know you thought it was some weird goblin for Halloween, but it's really me, the Bat Commander. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Alternate comedy comics. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm so I'm so glad to have you on the show. Finally, we, we've been trying to do something for like a month or so now, and just both of our schedules it didn't meld out, and I'm, I'm glad that now we have the time to, to talk. And I, I, I totally want to talk about Aquabat stuff. You guys had that amazingly successful Kickstarter and um, just so much awesomeness that, that's coming our way. Uh, what did you guys hit on the Kickstarter? What'd you, what'd you, what'd you raise? So on Kickstarter, uh, we got a little over 600,000. And then with the off Kickstarter uh, add-ons, it, it added up to be about another 90,000. So just under 700,000 for the total raise. And then there's still more stuff coming out and there's still other products that we're still kind of doing in conjunction with the Kickstarter. So man, we're up around $700,000 and that's plenty of money to make, you know, a lot of fun new episodes and two new records and really take some time and spend some time doing some cool stuff again for the kids. Yeah, I mean, I'm a huge fan. I've been watching the show for a while now. I'm constantly <laughs> re-watching episodes. I think I've seen every episode like 30 or 40 times. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I love the fact that you guys put the second season up on YouTube as well, because that's got to be great for you guys too to, to, to really get some buzz going for the show. Yeah, it took, you know, the reason... Once the show kind of went off the air, the hub went off the air, you know, um, we got a lot of feedback from people saying, when are you going to do more episodes? And it's just, it's not that easy. Wh wh why don't you put more episodes up? And there was a lot of, um, you know, different partners and production companies involved. So it took us a couple of years to actually get the rights back to the, the show. So we couldn't actually do a Kickstarter or raise any money or actually make any more episodes until we actually owned all the rights to the show. And that took, that took a while. Um, and it took a considerable amount of money that we had to raise ourselves. So I guess it took almost five years to get all the rights back, get oh, everything wow. back. And then once that happened, we kind of had exhausted all of our resources and we were just exhausted as the band as well and so um being able to put up the se second season episodes on on youtube and on the on the web it's been great because a lot of people hadn't even seen those and then hopefully to follow we'll be able to start putting up season one episodes so that people can have access to them whenever they want and there's a ton of other behind the scenes and deleted footage and extended scenes stuff that we have that we've really wanted to put out, but we never have been able to until now. So it's fun. It's great. And, um, uh, yeah, we're just kind of rolling with the punches and getting it done and getting stuff out there. And so within this next year, you'll most likely see all the episodes of the super show up, um, on the web, most likely on YouTube, but on, at our YouTube channel. And then um, as well as the new Kickstarter episodes and the new episodes we are doing from here on out. So uh, we'll see what happens. It's exciting times. That's fantastic. I mean, I'm a backer of the Kickstarter. I went in for, I think, the, the 55 level or whatever it was with the, with the shirt and a couple other things, too. So I'm super excited to get that stuff eventually. But I'm even more excited to see more Aquabat stuff out there, including those albums and those new episodes. Uh, I think it's it's just it's such a an awesome show that that when when you guys launched that Kickstarter and I thought it must have been a rights thing because it's just you know that's the way the world works with this stuff. But yeah. I was so happy to see that come on there because I knew you guys could get something going. There's so much love for the show. There's so many people that wanted to support, and 
it's a show that that needs to be in the world i mean we don't have that much stuff around like that anymore and and i think you guys are, are tapping into this really awesome kind of audience that 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 maybe you know they 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 miss it just as much as we all do so i think that uh it's it's such a great time to have this kind of show around and i think the world needs it well thanks i mean you, you know really i mean there's definitely no shortage of superheroes in the world and right now it seems like the apex of time when um you know superheroes are so popular with not just kids but with everybody and um you know, we when we started the Aquabats, we were kind of just having a laugh at our own uh, comic book nerdy personas in real life, as well as, you know, who would we be as a team of superheroes? And that's where the Aquabats really came out of that. And so, but also all the stuff we used to watch on TV that was kind of low budget, but funky, but it was all live action and practical and there wasn't there was there wasn't any CGI when we were kids, so the limited you know computer graphics we use in our show it's basically they're just kind of to enhance moments, not to really replace um, anything. And so um, it's it's just been really fun because we've kind of been able to make this retroy hybrid comedy show that's really having a, a laugh at pop culture as well as celebrating it at the same time so we i mean we love all the new marvel stuff that's coming out and um the comedy directions that they're taking with you know guardians of the galaxy and ragnarok and and uh wasp and Ant and ant-man it's just like those movies like are almost like episodes of the aquabats show so it's kind of like i guess the timing is right <laughs> because um we're just Superheroes are are fun and ridiculous, and I think the more you can have fun with that um, and not take it so seriously, I I think it's kind of, it kind of seems like we're hitting the same chord at that right now with everybody else. It's just like superheroes are great, but they're also ridiculous. So if we can be uh, maybe the Jackie Chan to the Marvel Bruce Lee, then We'll, we'll stick with the comedy, right? Because it's. I think. It's fun. I, I gotta be honest with you. I, I enjoy the Aquabat Super Show more than I enjoy the Marvel movies. Really? Thank yeah. you. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not. I'm not gonna rewatch uh, a Marvel movie 40, 50 times. I'm, I'll. I'll happily rewatch Aquabat episodes. Well, thank you. Hopefully, you catch all the little, tiny little things everywhere. I'm sure if you watched it 40 times, you've caught it over and over again. But um, it's just fun to make kind of shorter form, uh, l lower impact, but definitely there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot of deep layers in the Aquabats that if you're a pop culture connoisseur, if you like comic books, if you like, you know, sci-fi fantasy, all that stuff, it's really well layered into the show. And, you know, whereas our young kids audience, they, they don't have no idea and they don't care. It doesn't matter to them, but it's fun to, um, watch it with, you know, older kids like us and, and realize all the layers of <laughs> deep meanings and silliness that's in the show. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. When I, when I first saw it, it reminded me of, of, of like six different things. It's like, take a little bit of a team, take a little bit of uh, the monkeys, take a little bit of Batman 66, a little bit of Scooby-Doo, you know, and, and you mix them all up. Yes, and, and you know it's that kind of awesome. Just you, you just shut off your mind and go right into the world of it, and it's pure escapism, and I love that. And 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 that's something even at Alterna that I try to publish comics that are like that. Um, speaking of which, with with your with your songs, with your show, with everything, did you guys realize you've created like this Aquabat universe? I think um, it just kind of came organically and. Again, um, we knew we were heading that direction, but I, I don't know if, you know, looking back at all the bad guys and the villains and monsters we fought on stage and songs we've written, it just, it's been so much fun. It, it hasn't seemed like it's been 25 years. Like when I was a kid, the only bands that had been around for 25 years was like 
the Rolling Stones and maybe the Who, you know, and the Beatles, if they, they'd, you know, they'd been broken up for a while, but those, those were kind of bands that would have been around for a, like that long, just weren't around or they were just ginormous, you know? And so now looking back, there's a lot of our peer bands too, that have been around this long. And um, I don't think any of us thought or realized that there was any longevity in this. And so maybe that's kind of why it's, it's been enjoyable, at least for the Aquabats. I'm speaking for the Aquabats is that we've been creating this universe kind of inadvertently um, just having fun. And then now we're able to look back and go, wow, we've created this kind of lore and this canon and there's rules and regulations in our universe. And, and there's not too many rules, but there are some, you know, it's kind of cool. It's cool looking yeah. back and thinking, how, how did this happen? But uh, it's not bad. <laughs> no, no. I mean, that's one of the best things about it is, is the fact that you guys have these organically created characters, these these stories, these songs that feature kind of backgrounds about characters and stuff too. It's, it's something that, um, I mean, I've been listening to the Aquabats for a, a long time now since, I mean, 15, 16 years or so. And... Uh, yeah. It's I never never in a million years. First of all, I'll say this: never in a million years that I ever think that that this would occur. That I'd be talking to, to oh, you. Really? I mean, you were you were like a a teenage hero of mine. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So it's it's a very cool surreal moment for me as well, and um, it's 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 awesome to have you on. But uh, how with when it comes to the Aquabats, I'm always having this discussion with people. Did you come up with the name because it's kind of like acrobats or because it's kind of like Thundercats? Like, like how did you come up with the name? I, I think if you were to slice it and dice it, it was it would probably be more thunder thundercats than than acrobats because you know clearly our um, physical skills aren't as uh, sharp as maybe uh, it's more fantasy than. It I is don't know. I've seen some videos of you in concert doing those backflips back well, in the day, especially. Oh man, there was a time. <laughs> no, but, uh, I think. You know, in starting the band, there was kind of a a little surf music explosion happening around that time in in the Southern California, and there was bands, um, and, and just not just Southern California, but a kind of a surf band revival happening at the same time as this third wave of ska thing was happening, and so there was a bunch of bands like um, like the Mummies or the stingrays or the you know the phantom surfers which was a, a, obviously an influence on the aquabats um so we wanted to come up with a name that was kind of like you know the ventures or the specials like a the name and we were thinking of goofy surf names and what's wacky and i think the professor said what about the aquabats and it was like so like silly to think of a bat underwater, like trying to fly, you know, like whoop, whoop, whoop. that we're like, okay, well that, that, that's it. It's the Aquabats. And then really everything kind of happened from there. Um, you know, we didn't come with a design to be superheroes. We didn't come with a design to be any one thing. We just wanted to have fun playing music and doing the surf ska thing and the rock and punk and you know mixing some devo and some specials and some madness and some you know oingo boingo and mixing all these styles together there were a new wave they were punk you know we we had all kinds of styles that we wanted to do and even the first show we played um the intention was to have a like a turntables there and have a dj scratching um just to be ridiculous you know so like a a punk ska surf rock band with a dj just because that's kind of what the 90s was so it's just like it was like musical throw up a little bit you know what i mean everything was mixed together yep and of course shortly thereafter you know you had new metal comes out with you know rock with turntables and djs and it was just kind of in the ether i think at that point at the end of the 80s after the 80s to do st something that was I guess irreverent when it came to mixing music together. And that's, you know, long story short, the name, the Aquabats just came out of uh, what could be just so ridiculous sounding. And then again, that the whole 
the whole uh, universe just followed. It just happened. So that's it, awesome. It, it's, it eventually, it's, you know, became what it is. It's it's so cool to hear origin stories like that, more or less. I mean, that's that's your origin story. That's the band's origin story. And I know you said you guys have been around for like twenty five years. And um, yeah, nineteen ninety four we started. So next year will be twenty five years. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, <laughs> who awesome. knew? Absolutely awesome. <laughs> It's so cool to just think about that too, because you know, you guys are you guys are indie also. You know, you guys are kind of just doing your thing and 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 rocking it. And and it's it's awesome to see that you guys are an inspiration to to people like me as well. That that I'm an indie guy too. So looking at you know someone like you that that's yeah. managed to have this you know big long successful kind of career in terms of getting to do your stuff you, you never had to you know even i know there was hardships with getting the, the rights back and things like that for the show sure yeah you guys still managed to do that and, and that's really awesome to see and i think you know it, it's just you guys are are kind of the american dream more or less you know yeah. it's just that putting it out there and, and doing it make it possible that that's awesome well i i guess in some ways you know with what we, the way we look like and the way the band is, which was kind of going against convention and going against the grain a little bit, you know, growing up listening to punk, I always thought it was cool when people would go do the opposite of what everyone else was doing. So interestingly enough, when punk broke and Nirvana and, you know, all the bands were really big and punk became Green Day, became more mainstream, I, I we wanted to go and do something like for kids that was silly like hey kids brush your teeth you know and um i think we just knew from the get-go we weren't going to get a whole lot of support from record labels or from the mainstream because we were trying to swim against it a little bit you know and um it's been fun because we i think we kind of found a, a place <laughs> to be and that's with our fans and with people that understand that and people that look at what we're doing and think Oh, that's kind of cool. They're they're doing something totally different than everybody else. And um, even within like the ska scene or the punk scene, and we would come out and play shows with bands, and people would spit on us and like want to fight us because we're wearing costumes, you know, and, and <laughs> acting chipper, you know, and like talking about uh, what vegetables are most nutritious, you know, and just to be ridiculous. And I, I, we we always dug that. So as far as being indie goes, like we've always kind of knew no one's going to do this for us if we want to do this we have to we have to work hard and um you know pretty much no regrets i think the only big regret we have is when um we were trying to get the aquabat show on tv for so long and then finally yo gabba gabba got picked up and we went we went over here to nickelodeon and then on the hub and we were doing stuff on tv but really it's like being on a major label. It's kind of like your future. Um, it's up to them. At the yeah. Point. Yep. I think if we could go back and do some things over again, I think we would have done, kept doing stuff more indie and bent and stayed on YouTube because at the time you couldn't monetize YouTube when, when, when Yo Gabba Gabba got picked up and yeah, that's right. There was no, there was no way you could survive making youtube videos so why would you even try and then all that revolution happened while we were making stuff for regular tv so here we are making stuff for regular tv and now youtube comes up and just takes over everything and um people that are doing things independently and indie it's taking over it's like it's pretty much all kids watch and so i think that's the one thing where we're a little behind it which is funny too. It's just funny. Now we're, <laughs> we've always been really indie and now we're trying to be indie again. So um, I think it's cool that we can finally come back to YouTube and I guess be where we belong with our fans and do stuff without having executives telling us like, make sure those mummies are wearing seatbelts, you know, <laughs> you, you get crazy notes and things like the kids aren't even thinking about a mummy wearing a seatbelt. Like, let's just do the show, you know? So right. now it's yeah. going to, because I think we can take things to another level and be even weirder and more random, but still re maintain the same brand and fun stuff we've been doing for kids and for big kids alike. So 
it's crazy it's cool yeah yeah it is it absolutely is and um so so we've got a lot of comic readers in the audience and and i know you're a comic reader as well you're a comic fan yes um what was your first comic that you ever read do you do you remember that oh man um or at least the hero or the 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 book it's man, i'm just trying to think if there's one important first comic that i read i i know um back in the 70s um for some reason i was really attracted to ghost rider like way early when i was a kid like because it was a, a skeleton riding a motorcycle i just like skull head riding a motorcycle i just thought that was cool and then i remember my dad bought me a couple of ghost rider issues and i i have no idea where they are now but um I, that to me that stands out as being something that i remember as a kid and I remember he had a chain and he would just beat up bad guys and drive cars off the road. And I, as a really, really young kid, I remember that. And then I got pretty into, um, you know, manga back in the late eighties as well. And, you know, with, um, Akira and, um, Lum and my, the psychic girl and some of the st early Viz comics that would, that came over like really, yep. really early. Um, and I, I started reading that stuff and then um also got i got back into mainstream comics through like um frank miller dark knight and i was really i really had a big batman phase for a while but more like in high school less as a kid so as a, as a kid i mean I, I would read whatever you know so yeah yeah uh, conan the barbarian i'd read world's finest i'd read you know anything i could get my hands on really and I didn't really think about collecting as a kid that kind of came later in high school when I was more into skateboarding and I started, that's when I really started collecting stuff was probably in high school. And so I still have some of my comics from high school, like killing joke and the dark Knight stuff and all the early Viz comics I was just talking about. But um, yeah. So a lot of the Marvel stuff that I read when I was a kid that I wish I still had, um, I, they had a big impression on me, obviously. Um, but uh, anyway, that's kind of my gateway into comics I, was probably through Marvel and, um, but kind of weird stuff like, again, um, Ghost Rider and Conan, Conan and um, what was the other one? Uh, like Iron Fist a little bit because he was like martial arts guy. Yeah, right? yeah. With and, uh, with Luke Cage, yep. yeah, yeah. Um, I like that. I, I'm not too not that big of a fan of the series, the new one, but I liked the comics back in the day. Mm -hmm. That was kind Absolutely. of my era. So I was born in '72, so I'm definitely like a, I guess Silver Age comics, like kind of coming out of the Silver Age of comics, not like going into the Bronze Age, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I I I know a lot about comics. I'm not a huge, huge comic book collector, but I have, I have some key pieces and um, I've been collecting Marvel masterworks books just to have them. Cause I think they're like important stories to, you know, the first Spider-Man and the X-Men. And I remember in sixth grade um, being pretty into the X-Men, uh, uncanny X-Men. And um, there was a comic book store by my school and after school we would like go to the comic book store and check out what they had and they had issue number one this had to be 1983 or something 82 83 they had issue number one of x-men x-men number one um and it was 50 bucks and um wow I told my mom oh, I said, man, I want, there's this <laughs> book i want to buy and she's like okay well how much is it i said 50 bucks She's like, 50 bucks? No way. I'm like, but I think I think it's worth I think it's worth it. I think that you know it came out in the 60s and it's gonna be worth a lot of money someday. And she was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Move along, son. <laughs> and I, I can still remember like looking at I can still see it in my mind, like hanging on the wall and asking the shopkeeper, can I look at that? And him saying, No. He, he was like, give me the money and you can have it. And so uh that that's one that's another regret 
That's when I, you need that DeLorean, right, to go back and then pick that up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Marty! <laughs> 88 miles an hour! Exactly, you know. The it, 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 get the X-Men comic, get the sports almanac, and then come back to the future. The <laughs> exactly. No, yeah, that's oh, the, one like, oh, the one that got away. But because I, I can definitely, wow. I definitely made a case to the mom, pleading, please, the X Men number one. But you know, I, it, it's interesting all the stuff that growing up I could have saved or hung on to, or yeah, not, seriously, not and looking back, I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter that much. I have. I did get a lot of stuff though, since then, but. Uh, it's it's fun. Comics are fun. I I just think it is kind of crazy that comic book culture and superhero culture has become so popular because it just didn't see that coming. Yeah, I just didn't see it coming. But I guess I guess it makes kind of it makes sense. I just I'm yeah, as, long as, as long as they could do them right, you know what I mean. That's and I, right. That's right. We only really saw that maybe the Superman and Batman for the movies for for a while, but the marvel stuff was especially back in the day the marvel stuff was pretty horrible and um for yeah. those that remember it so so having all the stuff that we have now and and, and, and it making billions of dollars it's crazy to see because it at one point weird. in time none of that was going to get made at all oh yeah i mean when i heard they were doing guardians of the galaxy as a movie i was like that was a horrible comic why why would they do that yeah exactly and then <laughs> i didn't understand how they were going to do it and then hearing that Star Lord was going to be, uh, I just was like, I don't know. These were all like kind of fringy kind of characters that you you were like, huh? And you yep. had to really be into comics to even know who what that was. And then when the movie came out, it just it was so good. I would I was I was just like, all right, they win. And this is really it, it came out. It was great. It was a great movie. It's still a good franchise too. Like anyway, congrats to them. And all their hard work, success. <laughs> <laughs> now, something I'm getting asked a lot. I'm getting asked a lot because we have this comic that's called uh, Psycho Ko, and I know in the whole kerfuffle of the uh, Kickstarter and everything, I showed you this, and, and it was you know something that I'd love to send you an issue. Oh, by that's the way. right. I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I apologize. The Kickstarter has been so. Oh, I, I get it. Absolutely. And crazy, but I did see that. So you so, sent that to me as well. Yeah, I, mean, I want to. I want to actually mail yeah. this out to you. We'll have to get something going. I would love to get the Aquabats guest starring in an that issue awesome. of Psycho Ko. Yeah, that'd be cool. As long as we can, uh, be ourselves. Absolutely. Stay you know? true to ourselves. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's always asking. You know, we got to get the Aquabats on a comic. Got to get them on a comic. I know we've had talks before, but we're we're both our schedules are crazy and we're, we're yeah, super busy. And I, we have been talking a little bit and that has been something that's come up a lot is Aquabats. Um, when are you going to do a comic? And you know, if it's anything like the Kickstarter, it was the same thing. Aquabats. Why don't you just do a Kickstarter, do a Kickstarter. So we, we, I think when the time was right, we did the Kickstarter and I think the time is nearing that it's time to do a comic. And I, I think it's just the right ingredients and the right artists and the right writers. And we'd love to help, help write it and shape it, um, which I think all the best stuff is usually done when people are involved and they care about it and they're invested in it creatively. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to Psycho KO and let's check it, let's check it out and let's figure something out because I think it's time. It's time for Aquabats comic, but it needs to be good. It can't just be like- Exactly. A, to the do a, for the sake of doing a comic isn't a good reason. I think we need to do some kind of a good, you know, alt alternative story or yep. um, something that will bring readers to it besides it just the fact of being the Aquabats, right? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And that's what makes us excited as comic book fans is it doesn't, you know, it presents you with something different and unique. Like, I don't know if, you know, I don't want to pump any other comics here that are currently being done, but our, our friend Gerard Way is doing you know, his new comics, Doom Patrol and um, Cave Carson, Cybernetic Eye. And um, I don't know. He's just doing something different that I'm, I'm digging it. I'm digging what he's doing with Doom Patrol and other things. And he's our friend as well. But um, that's I think we want to do something kind of funky and weird with with the Aquabats, too. Let's try it. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think especially too, where you guys, you guys are indie, you're creator owned, you know, that's the whole thing at Alterna, creator owned. Yeah. So it's like, we're, we're a hundred percent creator owned. So basically all we would do is publish or distribute the comic, you know, based that, that whole thing. And you yeah. would get all the rights still to your stuff. So it wouldn't even be like you're signing a deal and we're taking a percentage of a TV thing or a, a webisode or whatever, or a t-shirt, right. you know, you get all that, you keep all that, you know? And so it just, it's just about getting, the comics out there and especially yeah. we've got comics take a look at the prices if you see our comics we've got dollar 50 comic books they're on newsprint like old school comics like old school. yeah that's what you i'm know? talking about but and, you, can um, your, you can get your silly putty on and yeah that's that, that's funny you say that because <laughs> i'm doing i'm doing my own indiegogo right now called alterna ween that's basically about uh using our comics as trick-or-treats for halloween oh wow and, that's a good idea so, so we're, we're selling like a, a big bundle of like 50 assorted all ages comics and it's like 30 bucks and they get like silly putty with it. So, so they could have fun with it too. And, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. You put your, the putty on the face and then you stretch yep. the face out. Yeah. Yeah. That, exactly. That's the jam right there. Yeah. Newsprint comics. I dig that. I dig that. That's cool. That's a good awesome idea. Get, be awesome to get the Aquabats on newsprint. Yeah. Doing the silly putty thing. You, it just is perfect. I'd love it. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's figure it out. Yeah, I absolutely. We've been trying to for a long time, but it's time. It's time to it do is, it. It is time, especially, you know, now you've got like the show rolling again with the, the YouTube stuff and you guys are like the masters of your destiny again, you know? Yes. Thanks to the fans, you know, really, it was, it was kind of up to them. And, you know, we, we had a few moments in our history of the band. It was like, Hey, is it really worth it to keep doing this? Are people even, do people even care? And, this this was definitely a big one. It was kind of like the third act, like kind of all is lost. It might be time to hang it up. And well, let's just see what happens. And and the fans have said, no, please keep going. So we're gonna keep going and see what happens. Absolutely. You know, I, I think it's it's just the world needs you guys, and I'm so glad that that the fans helped out with that. And uh, you know, it's that's that's the power. I thank fans all the time. If it wasn't if it wasn't for our readers, if it wasn't for the people that support us, I mean, you know more than anybody else too. We wouldn't be in the positions that we're in. We wouldn't have the lives that we have. We wouldn't be here right now. You know, we'd be doing right. something else and being someone else and being miserable more than likely. <laughs> so it's it's you know, we owe it all to to the people that support us. And um, I'm I'm just glad that that you're here right now and you're you're psyched about moving forward with more Aquabat stuff. It's so it's so cool to hear that. It's it's something that I know that that it's been it's not necessarily a dream of yours, but it's been something that you guys have been really trying to push for is to get that going again. So it's yeah, great to see that. I and again for for us, we the goal was to do a TV show based on the band and obviously the fictional adventures of the the fant fantastical adventures of this band of superheroes that fights <laughs> low budget villains. And, and you know, the, I always thought there was something there and it, it took so long for it to happen that uh, obviously self doubt creeps in and, you know, the in-laws saying like, Hey man, maybe you should hang it up. And like, you, you, you know, the, all the naysayers like snickering and going, you're still doing that. And, that all like weighs on you after a while. And then um, you just, just, we just believed in it. But even then, once the show came out, I was still really like, not totally sure that people liked it. But when kids started coming to the shows, like really little kids, like, you know, three to six year olds would come and be like, back a man or a crash. And once the kid, it get, we got the kid stamp of approval. Then it was like, a big weight was off our chest because it was kind of like saying this dream that you had, that you could make this show about a punk band that was also superheroes, but do it for families and kids, you know, it could work. And that dream that yes, it could work just pretty much came true. Cause kids told totally, have told us, and we have so many fans now, old and young alike. It's just, it's definitely a dream come true. And, um, that was really, it's really, I think that was the big moment that was really satisfying for us as a band and as dudes is when the kids basically said, yes, Aquabats, we want more Aquabats. And, you know, obviously we've had a lot of fans through the music, but, um, 
getting the fans through the TV show was really what I think stamped it and as, as saying like, yes, this could work. Yes, there is an audience for this and we should keep doing it. So, um, and the Kickstarter again was really the green light to take off, uh, off the runway to keep going. So, um, yeah, you get that next it, generation of, of interest yeah. too, you know? So it's, it's good to see that alive and well because you get the fans who probably really listened to you you know 20 25 years ago like you said and now they've got families they've got kids you know yeah. and, and they're bringing them to to see the aquabats to to listen to the music all that kind of stuff and then you never know who you guys are going to influence not only musically but also in other ways other creative ways too so it's important that, That's right. that you, you know, guys are doing that and even there's kids with then parents that would come to our shows and not even know we were a band. They were expecting it to be like a Power Rangers show or, you know, Disney on ice or something, but it was really just us playing our songs and, and p parents were surprised. We're like, Oh, we didn't know you were a rock band and we didn't know you were so loud, you know? So that's kind of fun too, is by you getting a crowd like that. But it's, it's kind of weird to um, when you're a band for so long, it's weird to see who, who's, whose influence that you've had and or what influence you've had on other people. And that's been kind of fun too, you know, to, to see, uh, see it still going and see little influences here and there. And obviously I don't think that the Aquabats is, um, you know, we take our influences from lots of different places and I don't think, you know, being a hundred percent original is a thing really anymore because everything, everything is born under uh so so much influence there's so much content yeah. coming from all different directions but it is kind of fun to see some of those influences that we we've, we've put out uh show up in other places so that's definitely cool yeah so um you got a you got a jet in like 5 or 10 minutes right sure yeah so uh i'm going to take a couple questions from the chat if you guys have any questions in the chat please let us know we can take people are in the chat Yep, we've got uh, 60 people right now in the chat. Hey, guys. Check this out. It's really me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's we'll take some questions. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions in the chat for Bat Commander, uh, please hold your questions for me. I know some of you guys have questions about comics and publishing and whatever. I do a show every week, so you guys uh, can ask those questions then. Let's get some Aquabat, Bat Commander related questions tonight. Okay, here, here's another one. Ready? E.T. Bone Home. Elliot. That's Elliot. a pretty one. Got to give you some Reese's Pieces. <laughs> Amazing, right? <laughs> Spot on imitation of E.T. I got Spot scared on. there for a second. I thought that I was interviewing E.T. And I was like, where did Bat Commander go? Well, ask anyone <laughs> in the chat if they would like me to answer questions as E.T. or um, another monster. I can do it. Oh, we got a question for you. It says, uh, just saw Fashion Zombies video. It was great. Uh, would you fake cry for us, uh, then be fake angry? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's the big idea? <laughs> <laughs> oh man that was, that was awesome great someone says uh back commander what's et short for extraterrestrial <laughs> there you go you didn't know it's on the posters guys come on someone else says for eat tacos <laughs> oh, you know, i heard today is actually eat a taco day or something like that it's like national share a taco or something it's something to do with tacos something today to do with tacos today right yeah. So you know what I'm going to have tacos for dinner. Yep. Yep. Make sure you don't get any burritos though from the graveyard again. That wasn't good that time. Remember <laughs> this is giant robot right here. Oh man. Oh favorite. yeah. This was my favorite show when I was a kid. Johnny Sacco. Johnny Sacco. Yeah. This was it. This is from Japan. It got squished in the move, but. It's one of my favorite things ever, kids. Just if, if you're looking for birthday gifts ideas, Johnny Sacco. That's thanks. Thanks for coming. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Let's see. We got one more question in the chat too. Oh, a couple yeah, more. Keep going. More uh, questions. This is, more uh, questions. Let's see. Tank Ferret says. Tank Ferret. Yeah. May I have the Aquabats be an entertainment IP in my cyberpunk universe? Can you be a ray of hope? 
Of course. There you go. We were born to be a ray of hope. What What do you need? Like, uh, how do we make this ray of hope a reality? Because isn't a ray of hope kind of an intangible thing? How do we yeah. make it tangible? Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. Right, another question? It's always an intangible, but we can be your personification of a ray of hope. How about that? There you go. Look there no further go. than this mustache. <laughs> we got one more question. It says, uh, uh, are you going to take the Fury of the Aquabats album on tour? You only did a select few shows, That's but the right. East Coast needs the Fury album front to back. You know, we would love to. Don't get me wrong. We're, we're going to do one more show in Anaheim of the Fury front to back on December 7th, Anaheim House of Blues. Um, we'd love to take it to the East Coast. It's just how much do the promoters want to help us take it to the East Coast? That's the problem. So if we can get a groundswell of support and maybe have one of the New York promoters or Philly or somewhere nearby put together a little package to figure out how we can get it out there, we'll do it. It's just sometimes easier to do shows locally because we all live so close to here. We yeah. don't have to fly anywhere. We don't have to drive anywhere. So taking the Fury on tour is a little tricky, especially getting the Baron Von Tito on the road. It's hard. I know that my friends at Terrificon, they do uh, a, a, an awesome show at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. I know that they definitely are interested in having you guys there. So I don't know if that'll ever be possible, but that'd be cool. It's totally possible. And I hate to sound like such a mercenary, but it's just about the financials. If we can pull it off, we can get an offer to get everybody out there and all the projectors and screens and everything we need to pull it off. We're dead. We're there. We are there. Come on, East Coast, pull it together. <laughs> Definitely bring the bring the Aquabats to the East Coast, especially for me. I'm an East Coaster, so I'd love to. I'd oh, love yeah, to see some Aquabats. At? I'm in New Hampshire right now. New Hampshire, hey. So we're on like the opposite ends of the, the country right now. It's crazy. Yeah. Someone asked actually, where, where is MC Bat Commander right now? I guess I'm they're interested in, in what you got going on. We're at headquarters here. This is our uh, screening room where, we, where all the screening goes down. We also shoot some vlogs and things in here. Uh, there's a warehouse out that door, and then there's a uh, you know, bunch of stuff around and toys and weird stuff everywhere. So... This is our uh, one of our think tank rooms where we think a lot about stuff, and that's about it. <laughs> we just think a lot. No, this is uh, we practice in this room. Sometimes we rehearse, write songs, write episodes. So it's surrounded by influences that we love to help put the DNA of fun into what we're doing to remind us who we are, what we stand for. Exactly, right? Because the inspiration. Posters and Japanese toys. We got somebody else in the chat. Says, uh, how'd you lose your front tooth? Do, they, do you want to tell the story of the fact that it's not actually a lost sure, tooth? I'll, I'll, I'll spread that rumor. So kids at home, I didn't actually lose my tooth. This is actually a black tooth. Okay? Because what happened was I did lose a tooth, and then I found a magical black shard and stuck it in there. And now that is a black tooth. It gives me magic powers. The power to go out and fight for the righteousness of the world. <laughs> gives you magic powers to be yeah. magical. That's right. It's magical. <laughs> it's a story that hopefully will come out in the comic books of the true story of the Bat Commander's black tooth. Because be without cool. the black tooth, I'm an extreme pacifist. There is no way I even want to like get out of bed or hurt anything, or you know, I just want to just you know just relax, and let people be people. Because people are people, so why should it be? You and I should get along so awfully. <laughs> <laughs> but with this black tooth, it gives me enough gusto to kapow evil right in the nose <laughs> there you go that, that's kind of like you know you take off the uh, the glasses and you're you're superman now right that's right and Mahara. oh man that's awesome i'm just saying guys 
without this black tooth, I would. There's no way I'd be touching Mothra at all because I'm, I'd be afraid of. I'm afraid of bugs. The real Bat Commander is afraid of everything, and he doesn't want to fight. He just wants peace and parades. <laughs> Okay. So we got another question. This person sounds very desperate for the answer. They said, if you have the time, what is the MC Bat Commander's favorite candy that people must know? Ooh, favorite candy? Man, that's hard. That's really hard. When people ever ask what's your favorite candy or what's your favorite song, imagine you had a bag of M&Ms, which is not my favorite candy, by the way. And you had a bag of M&Ms and someone says, what's your favorite piece of candy in that bag? It would be hard to say. You'd have to first. You'd have to eat all the candy, and then decide which shade or which you know formula of um, color food coloring was better or worse. It just would be too hard. It's too hard to say. But I do like the following. I'm a fan of. Mm, I like those English all sorts licorice candies. Those are pretty good. I like Butterfingers. I like. Chico sticks, those really cheap coconut peanut butter things. Those are really good. Big hunks with the peanut butter on the inside. Um, Twix, peanut butter M and M's. Uh, what else? I'm getting, I'm getting a peanut. Going. I'm getting a peanut butter. I like peanut butter. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I too. I, I love peanut Pretty butter. Good. Peanuts yeah. are good. Peanut M and M's are good. Um, I like. Chocolate covered coconut stacks, haystacks. I guess I like chocolate a lot. I'm not like a fruity candy guy, even though I'll eat some Skittles or like fruit stuff. I kind of like the chocolate stuff, but the chocolate stuff isn't good for my stomach, guys. So might have to retire from chocolate forever. Oh no! Maybe once in a while, huh? Once in a while. Yeah, every now and then. <laughs> every now and then. Every once in a while. Yep. Sometimes every once in a while. Chocolate. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, someone wants me to thank you for doing all, the all ages shows that you do when you're on tour. It says it's awesome to be able to take my son to see a great band that we both enjoy. Thank you. And it's great having you there because it means a lot more than people know to the Aquabats to see families there because um, we have families and we know families are so important. And Having families at our shows, it just means the world because we also know that for a lot of those kids coming to the shows, that their first experience that they're going to be having with live music or a live band or something as loud as the Aquabats. So we want to make it fun for everybody and we want to make it memorable for the kids and um, hopefully inspirational so that the kids can go out and do fun stuff and they know that they can go to a concert and it doesn't have to be a negative thing like a, like a big fight ready to happen, but it can be something that's fun and un unifying and, um, you know, full of love and well, chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be really cool too, actually, if we got a comic going on some level, whether you were a guest star or in a comic or a separate comic and have them at the shows too. I think that'd be, that'd be pretty cool to do. Yes, I agree. We should sell comics at the shows. Be awesome. Kill them. Um, so it looks like it looks like time is 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 basically up unless you've got a couple more minutes Let's take or... a couple more questions then i can split because uh i do have to uh run the kids to uh, soccer practice tonight you know how it goes in the battle train oh wow there you go Taking the whole uh, neighborhood okay. kids to soccer practice in the battle train so we got a couple more minutes guys so get in your last second questions if you've got them a couple more minutes um we so we got one. We got another question here about the tooth. About they want to know: Is the black tooth made out of dark matter or mystically imbued uh, onyx or obsidian? <laughs> it's obsidian, mystically imbued for sure. And it's pure. It's look. I don't want to admit this, but the black tooth, it's pure evil. Okay, so it that that little bit of pure evil inside this all good person, it just gives me you know the motivation to do things that maybe are kind of jerky sometimes. Maybe you know, that's, maybe the back commander is kind of a jerk sometimes. That's because of his evil tooth. That's got to make its way into a uh, into a storyline there. That sounds yeah. like we maybe wrote a, evil tooth takes you over. We actually wrote a treatment for that. 
to show people how it happened, how it actually happened. We wrote a treatment for an episode that was like a really long, hour-long episode. But it was, uh, let's say, way too ambitious for the network's tastes. But that could end up maybe a, a movie, a short film, um, a documentary, perhaps. It could happen. It's from another dimension, too. It's not from Earth. So Obsidian, probably but it could also be some other kind of matter unidentified from another dimension. It's definitely hard though. Can you hear that? Wow. Interesting. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's almost like, like the black suit that Spider-Man gets, like the symbiote. That's right. That's right. Only it's just on your tooth. It's just on my tooth. That's right. It's just on my tooth. And it kind of has a mind of its own a little bit. It's whispering to me right now. What's, what, what's it saying? Just says drive off the way when you get a chance. <laughs> uh, is it is it maybe telling you something else? Maybe telling you like pick up like the grande meal from like a Taco Bell on the way home. <laughs> that's what it is. It's telling me to eat carbs all the time. Man. I don't that's know. I could see it. If I didn't have this black tooth, I would probably be really skinny. That's where the chocolate cravings come from, the black tooth. Ricky Fitness has to get you going, you know, like could, could fight back that that black tooth that wants you to eat all the all the crap you see. <laughs> Ricky got his own work to do. You see him lately? Yeah, we're all we're all little shabby old guys right now. Don't worry, kids. We're getting back in shape, though. Shabby flabby. No longer shall we be. Let's see. Somebody wants to know. Uh, Let's see, Erwin Waterman says, uh, and I don't know if it's a real name or not, but yeah. Says, you were in Portland a year or two ago, and my sister says she ate chili fries with you guys, and you signed her shoes. Does that sound familiar? Um, sure, yeah. Yeah. You know, it might. It could have been the other guys, because I. it doesn't really, rem I don't remember. I would, I would definitely remember eating chili fries in Portland. So it was probably the other guys. I'm sure it happened. It just maybe I wasn't there. That's an interesting story. Boy, I was, I was probably doing math or something. Maybe. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> behind, behind, uh, in the backstage, right? Putting together all the all the figures. You got yeah, like the old them. school ticker yeah. tape running. Everyone's like, don't you know what a calculator is, Bat Commander? You're like, calculator? What's that? <laughs> Who needs a calculator? <laughs> That's what cheaters use. That's right. <laughs> I'm no cheater. Let's see, we've got, uh, it looks like we got one more question. Looks like it's about the tooth again. Everyone's obsessed with this tooth. It says, uh, can yeah, you yeah, use the tooth as really a guitar much. pick? What's that? Can you use the tooth as a guitar pick? I could, but if I pulled it out, it would render me um, uh, apathetic to even playing the guitar. Like, why would I want to play the guitar? It might offend somebody. You know what I mean? So the non-guitar players that couldn't play the guitar might be offended. So, see, that's that's how important the black tooth is to Commander. It renders him basically um, into a wuss. And only someone with a black tooth can even say the word wuss anymore because it's not a it's not a nice word, kids. Don't call people wusses. And I wouldn't if I didn't have this black tooth. So I get to blame all my bad behavior. I'm this bad boy right here. That's right. This bad boy right here. <laughs> yeah, the bad commander and that that was part of the idea for the episode was to showcase what the bad commander would be like without his black tooth. Um, which would be pretty funny. Oh yeah, it would, give, it would give me an opportunity to show my great. acting chops. Yeah, get get your range in, you know. Because yeah. I am an award-winning actor. You are. Um, not actually a real acting award, but I could say I'm an award-winning actor. Hey, you got something <laughs> to show, so it counts, right? That's right. <laughs> you got the TV prize. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Tells, someone says, uh, ask uh, MC Bat Commander if he still has the Battle Tram. Yes, we still have the Battle Tram. It's being worked on right now. Um, the engine is a little uh, shoddy, so we're working on it so that it's not naughty. <laughs> <I just rambled. laughs> the Battle yeah. Tram is awesome. I'd love to see, 
like like remember the Ninja Turtles and they had the turtle van and and yes was, uh, that was that the idea let's make it, and everything let's make yeah that you I'd could like love to see that oh man and look at all the things inside or the old like Star Trek bridge playset you could like pop the battle tram open and you show the actually the interior of it yep. it's, it's ready to happen man totally yeah. and, and if anything too i'd love to see i don't know if you guys have it yet if you do i, I apologize for it but um i'd love to see aquabat funkos they gotta get in on that i know what's the deal come i come on funko um we actually have a prototype for the um the battle tram toy i'll show you oh man can you see it Holy smokes. It's a prototype right next to this guy. There he is. It's the head of Ron Mark. Anyway, there's the prototype of the battle tram. That could be cool, right? Wow, that, that would be incredible. I think, I think that would do fantastic. I think people would love that. Oh, man. It was actually a prop we used on the show, um, but it p basically became kind of a toy prototype. So wow, there you go. That's like that's like another, you know. I don't want to force more Kickstarters on you, but that's like another Kickstarter in the works. If you had someone else in there wanted to do something like that. <laughs> well, we're we're again we're hoping that through these new mini webisodes we'll get. Uh, get that licensing going, yeah. Get licensing going and more fans and re really, I think. You know, going to Comic Cons all over the country, and there's only like a handful of compared to how many people are at these Comic Cons. There's only really a handful of great, cool people who know who the Aquabats are. But at the same time, the con is full with of cool, awesome people that love pop culture and they love superheroes. And it just seems like those places are full of people that should know about the Aquabats. They should like the Aquabats because. We are their people, and they are we are they, and they are we, right? So exactly. Um, that's the thing we're hoping is that through this Kickstarter, we've we can start the Legion of Righteous Comrades. We can do new episodes, new webisodes, new music, and get the word out to people out there that love superheroes. They love Marvel and DC and all that stuff, all the stuff pop culture. That the Aquabats, we're right with you. Like this, this should be a show that you like. And I don't want to you know, assume anything or put anything in anyone's, you know, whatever people have make their choices and that's great. But I just, just kind of seems like a no brainer that the Aquabats, like we're right in there with, you know, fun stuff that people like. And, um, that's why we do it. Like we, we do, we still do it. Cause we, we want to make action figures. Cause that would be fun. We, I collect action figures. So, you know, like, I didn't collect this Johnny from Karate Kid for no reason. <laughs> Does he sweep the leg? Yeah, he sweeps the leg. <laughs> yeah. He does like if you push the back, he like he's on a new CGC oh, leg. Wow. You can set it and then there's a little button on his back and you can go, take this, Daniel son, and his leg comes up. So, and then you can get Daniel son. And then you, you guys can like recreate the final scene, right? True sure. strength come from heart, right? <laughs> Put him in a body bag, Johnny. <laughs> then, uh, Daniel's son. Daniel has like the chop and he has the chop hand like this. That he has the chop hand. Yeah. And then he also has the kick leg, the leg that comes up. Wow. Anyway. Yeah. It was like the mantis kick, and then he goes, you know, all like I won, and then it goes, "You're the best around." Yeah. You're the best around. <laughs> and then, um, thirty years later, they make a TV show about them and what they're doing now, right? Look at them, yeah, on YouTube as well. Yeah. So the good thing about the Aquabats is, is you know, kids, we do if we do this right, in another thirty years, we could come back as like real old people superheroes that's just really never caught on and i think we could be the first yeah the first. i think you could i guess Absolutely. mermaid man and barnacle boy kind of did it so i take it back we're not the first but the first live action live action yeah okay, okay. <laughs> we're coming back <laughs> we're not going, i guess more than coming <laughs> back, we're not going away <laughs>
Oh man. So I, I want to thank you for, for taking so much time today for even staying like 15 minutes longer than, than, than you had originally planned on doing. Um, everybody in the chat is so grateful for it. I'm grateful for it. It was awesome having you on. Um, we got to definitely talk some more about, about this comic stuff because we for need sure. the Aquabats in, in a comic and uh, the world needs the Aquabats in a comic. And uh, I'd love it. to be able to get that out there. Okay. Deal guys. Make it, let's make it happen. We did it before we can do it again. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So uh, on behalf of everyone in the chat as well, thank you for doing everything you do. You've meant a lot to, to so many people throughout the years. Um, and seriously, I'm just really excited to see the Aquabats thriving in this new era of Aquabat awesomeness. So um, it's, it's just awesome to see. It's just great. Thanks, guys. Let's keep in touch, everybody. Absolutely. Aquabat. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to follow the Aquabats on Twitter at the Aquabats. And you can follow me on Twitter as well at Peter Sametti. You could follow Alterna Comics as well at Alterna Comics. It's very easy stuff to follow. There's no crafty, clever names there. It's just pretty straightforward. Um, thank you guys for joining us on the show tonight. Again, thank you to the MC Bat Commander, the one and only. Thank you guys. <laughs> And make sure you guys check out the Aquabats on YouTube as well. They got all the episodes of the second season. Do you guys think that you might end up getting the episodes of the first season up there? Or is that on like yeah, Netflix or something else? That's coming. That's, oh, it's well, coming. It's coming. We got the rights back, so it's it's coming. We just sometimes when another company uploads stuff to YouTube, uh, you have to go through and do a bunch of legal stuff to prove that you have the rights now and it's not them and just so your stuff doesn't get flagged. Cause we we've been getting troubles with that with season two stuff as well. But I think we've got through all that, you know, legal robot stuff that they have on YouTube. Now we're trying to do that with season one. So. Oh, it's, awesome. It's, it's, tricky. it's harder than you think. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's great news. Awesome. Awesome news that eventually season one will be on there. Yeah. It's good that you guys have your baby back that you got your creation, your stuff. I know that's, that's so important to you uh, as a, as a fellow creator. I understand uh, how that would be so important as well. So, um, awesome to see. Cool. And again, check them out on YouTube. They got music videos on there. They've got all kinds of stuff. So cool. make sure you watch all of them. Uh, and if you're like me, make sure you watch them 30, 40 times, <laughs> leave them on loop while you're doing other things, whatever, give them the views. It's all good. Uh, it's worth it. The Aquabats are great. Thank you, guys. So, again, hey, man. Thanks. thanks a lot. Thanks, guys. No, no problem. Yeah. Thank you again. And um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. And see you soon. <laughs>